Watching the latest edition of the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information, I'm Randy Alvarez. With us in studio today, we have two board-certified prosthodontists. Today's topic, what you can do to have a great smile. My advice, stick around for the latest edition of the Wellness Hour. The Wellness Hour, an in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You are watching the latest edition of the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. My first guests are Drs. Frank Seaman and Mike Wiley. They are board certified specialists in prosthodontics. They are here today to discuss aesthetic dentistry. Dr. Seaman, Dr. Wiley, welcome to the show. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Before we get into today's topic, let's start with uh, what you do. What is a prosthodontist? <laughs> well, Mike, you know, it's very interesting. We always have to explain to the public what a prosthodontist is. It's a really a dental specialist and we uh, specialize in the field of prosthetic dentistry. We do comprehensive restorative dentistry, right Mike? Right. The name of your practice, Restorative and Aesthetic Dentistry, who are your typical patients? These are patients that um, uh, they want to have um, uh, teeth replaced, their smile replaced, their missing uh, teeth have become worn, uh, they're, uh, they want a lifestyle change that uh, they're not afraid to smile anymore or it may be people that are missing teeth that want to get back to better function. Um, uh, just a variety of, of, of patients that uh, we restore them back to an aesthetic smile. Now, it's called cosmetic dentistry, aesthetic dentistry. You refer to it in my notes as aesthetic dentistry. So what is it? What exactly is it? Aesthetic dentistry, Randy, is really restoring what goes behind the lips, and it's all the teeth. We deal with teeth, but we do change facial profiles, change facial features, and really uh, change uh, people's attitude, thoughts about themselves, and really restore the, the self-confidence that they once had with a natural-looking smile. You speak in terms, also, of an aesthetic smile. Does that just mean a good-looking smile, an attractive smile? Uh, every patient is, is truly their own individual. And you cannot have a cookie cutter format for one smile that works for everybody. You must, when you take a look at these four photos here. These are your patients? These are our patients. And uh, you'll see very, very broad, wide open smile showing a lot of the gingival tissue to one that's a little more uh, firm where you, the teeth are the center of the smile. Um, we deal with smile design. Uh, and this is a major part of the comprehensive workup that we do using a team. We use our lab technician, we use other specialists that might have to set the frame of the gingival tissue to, to scallop it so it's nice and pretty. Uh, and But the main thing is we have to listen to the patient. Each patient's look, spent a lot of time looking in the mirror and they have a vision. They have a vision of what they think they want. And it's our job to listen to them, work it up, uh, so that they can see what we can do and then proceed on from there. Now you call it smile design. We've talked quite a bit off camera about this smile design. And, and, and I, I should also mention I've probably seen a hundred dentists work. What you're going to show, what we, these slides you brought, I mean this is some of the best work I've ever seen. I mean there is Thank art you. in this I'm learning. So tell me about this smile design, what you're talking about. You know uh, Randy, uh, smile design is much more than just white teeth. Uh, it, it gets into also restorative teeth that we have to put on certain teeth to restore their, their overall uh, shape and contour and how they blend in with the other teeth, either blending in with other restorations uh, or other natural teeth. And so we look at the proportion, the balance, and we, we set the stage, the palate of the face, the lips, and balance in the uh, proportions of the widths of the teeth and how they uh, are in proportion to each other inside. Now he said cookie cutter. I see a lot of veneers, for example. Right. Ever since I met my first dentist, now I see veneers all over the place. And oftentimes they look like dentures or they look fo uh, fake or, or big. So how do you avoid that look? And is it, uh, another question is, I guess all, all dentists are not uh, doing veneers the same way. That is correct. Is that right? Correct. Uh, we really believe in a team approach. And one of the, the major players in our team uh, is, is the ceramist. Uh, and the, the, the a ceramist has to be an artist. 
There's this is a, the person that makes That's right. The this is actually a, makes the teeth for us. Right. Okay. He's a not just a technician, but he has to be able to draw it, visualize it, and he may put in one crown or one veneer, there may be five, six, or seven colors. Layers of color. Layers of color. Because if you've ever seen one of these crowns where it just looks like someone's taken a paintbrush and just made it white, versus deep color with translucency and yes luminescence around it so it's it's really an artwork and it goes more than just the shape the contours are important but also the surface texture i mean you can't have something that looks like a marble and it's just is just shining all the light back at you okay. you have to have little nuances in well, there well give me an example then uh, on this uh, person here, this lady is uh, an executive uh, in an office downtown, and she uh, had a very specific aesthetic concern. She had an acid reflux problem in college, and all of her enamel eroded away and created very thin teeth that, that are now chipping away and becoming very transparent in nature. And sh she's getting married, was getting married uh, last summer and wanted to look pretty for her. So what was your diagnosis? What, what, what did you need to do? Okay, Randy, so what we did with her is that we restored all of her top teeth with all ceramic crowns, no metal-backed crowns, to give a very natural-looking tooth substance. We, with our uh, ceramist in-house, we uh, maximize the benefit of the proportion size of the teeth, the contours, and the, the edge design, and how it all flows into her lip and facial features to give her a wow smile. Now those look like natural teeth. Yeah. Extremely. They're not straight across, they've right. got... You don't see the black line. Oh, sure. And Randy, remember we were talking about the, um, uh, the surface texture. Look at how the ceramist has broken up how the light hits. And, uneven and surface, like uneven. a regular tooth. And, and this is natural, and it's also a younger look. We can take literally years off the smile of somebody by adding that rather than having some old polished denture tooth looking like smile. Okay, now, now you say that you have a ceramist on site. Right. How is it normally done? Somebody goes into a dental office, they're going to get veneers, they're sent out? Most of the cases are sent out in, in the uh, real world dentistry out there. They all have a commercial lab that they send their work out of their office to. Uh, we're both, in our specialty training, we received a lot of laboratory training, and so we, we feel very strongly to have our lab technician in-house where we can work directly with the lab technician. He can work directly with the patient on site. Right. We have full control of the process that way. Yeah, the, our ceramist literally comes right to the chair and gets to know the patients as well as we do. It's on a first name basis. Uh, he comes in and uh, communicates with them on shade. Uh, we have uh, booklets that have different smiles to help the patient say, oh, I want a youthful look or, or something along those lines. Uh, and he deals directly with the patient. It, at the time the, the crowns are being aesthetically tried in and a bite being adjusted and everything else. We can have some modifications Absolutely. made. The, the patient may say, boy, that's too white, let's splash a little more color on. And instead of having fine. to, yeah, yeah, fire it right in because we have all the porcelain ovens and everything right in the lab. And he can literally bring in the colors with a paintbrush and his palette and paint it right on there take it back, fire it in the lab, and 20 minutes later, we have the corrections made. Now, all of this is just for a natural-looking tooth. Correct. Is that right? It's, yeah. That's correct. Is it really worth going out of your way to do that? Oh. I mean, it makes us, that big of a difference from some commercial lab to your lab on site. Uh, we can't in tell you that, that. I mean, that, in your no. view. The, to be able to produce a natural-looking tooth really takes a lot of extra effort, and to to watch the smile on these people's faces after they leave and they say, wow, that looks like, like my own natural teeth used to look. And it is so rewarding to us. Our entire staff really gets into what right. we do. How much art, how much science? I've been told you're artist right. by another doctor, Don Brown. Right. He said, these guys are artists. They're good at what they do. The veneers is not just about slapping porcelain on teeth. And that's the way I felt coming into this. There's a lot of that science. That anybody can though. do it. There's a lot of science and that, that's part of the training uh, and um, you have to understand uh, not only the, the beauty, but we have four or five different type of restorative materials in our office so that if, um, uh, if we need to, our, our ceramist may come in and say, wow, this person really has a bright smile. Well, there, we'll have a ceramic that produces a higher value, a brighter smile, or they may have somebody who's is a little more gray in their teeth and we have a ceramic that matches that. If there's a mistake in the world of cosmetic dentistry that's being made, uh, maybe by dentists, inexperienced dentists, what do you think it is? What would you say it is? 
Randy, I, I'd say it's that they don't really fully evaluate the reason why that tooth needs a veneer. Okay. And uh, if it's a wear case, uh, we have to really study that wear is just an effect. It's a worn tooth, but we have to look at the reason why that tooth got worn. And so stop, that's the cause. Stop doing the Band-Aid effect and find out why what's happened. Whatever we do, that tooth is still going to get beat up just like the tooth got worn. So if somebody has worn teeth and then they slap veneers on it, they're still going to get worn. Very prone to those uh, well, what do you do? veneers you fix the bite? or wearing. You fix? Exactly, exactly. I have a perfect case for that, uh, okay. what we're talking about there. Uh, on this case here, uh, this gentleman is a uh, city employee and uh, he was very embarrassed of his smile. They were just wearing away. They're short teeth. They're short teeth and he's not becoming very gummy in his smile and he wanted an aesthetic. His wife really wanted him to get his teeth fixed up. And so he came in and uh, if we didn't fully evaluate the mechanics of his overall bite in, in TMJs, uh, we might have mistreated him. Put, many people would go on with this case right here and put veneers on all of his Many teeth. dentists. Many dentists. That's would a very have probably just put treatment. veneers on there. Yes. And then wonder why they would keep on chipping or falling off. So what'd you do for this guy? Well, Randy, take a look at the after. This is what we uh, ended up with the final result. Can you so please? So short teeth. Short teeth now he came in. I had to fix his back teeth bite first and take the bite pressure off the front teeth so I can predictably say he won't be wearing or chipping his front restorations. And we ended up with just a perfect result. He's had these teeth for about seven years now. No problem at all in the world. I can predictably say he'll keep his teeth and smile for a lifetime. Now this is not what I would, because I, I feel like I could see veneers walking down the street because of the size, because of the shape, those sharp corners. But, but in this particular case, it's very rounded, very natural. We work very hard and we work with the patient on the edge design with how much curvature we give, the length of the front two teeth. It gives a more youthful smile. And so we're very aware, we listen to our patients with what they really want from their smile. So many of your patients that have veneers that they don't like or they're falling out, what do you do for them? Well, one of the, we have several classifications of patients that come in. Uh, one of the you know, unique things of, uh, of today's world is there are patients that really don't need anything you know, mechanically or anything else, but they, they, they want it done. Uh, others is replacing some work that's been there that they have found that they don't like, and it could be older or recent. I have another uh, a case right here which is, okay. uh, demonstrates this. Uh, those look pretty good, though. Well, there's, there's black uh, leaking going underneath these. She's had a couple of them pop off. Uh, the other thing to look at is what did she, again, remember I told you, we have to listen to the patient. And, okay. and if, you, if I don't ask them, then I've committed the biggest crime. I used to uh, put my own thought process into what, what I thought they were going to want. No, I got to listen. Very round. Uh, she just felt like uh, there wasn't any delineation between one tooth and the other. They weren't like her natural teeth. That's right. They weren't like the natural These are teeth. These crowns made and she doesn't like how they look. Look at this contact point. It goes from here all the way up to the tissue and, and this tissue sort of like being shoved out of the way. So really, we didn't, I did not need to go in and reinvent the wheel with her like, like Dr. Seaman, like Frank had to do on the last case. Okay. All I had to do was tighten up the bite a little bit so they weren't running into these front teeth because she did have a little hit and slide into the front teeth with the lower jaw. Eliminate that, stabilize the bite, and then wow. give her something okay. that, look, you can tell where one tooth starts, one stops. Look at how this tissue now, instead of being short and blunted, is now long and slender. These teeth aren't any more narrow, but they look more narrow because the ceramics, I, when I prepared the teeth, I went in between and allowed the ceramics to develop the smile from the back of the tooth forward, but still keep it a veneer and keep it very thin. Like that's a nice result. When this happens, I mean, emotion burst out. Uh, the assistants get, I get choked up. Uh, the assistants get hugs, ceramics comes in, they're out. It's a the big front. celebration. Yeah, they're out the front desk, smiling. We give them a rose. Well, we've changed these people's lives. How they yeah. think about themselves, how they project themselves. Yeah, it is. And just, they appreciate it. So you see thing. changes in their the oh. way they feel, the way they act. Oh, oh absolutely. It's really? amazing. Yeah. I mean, and why aren't all dentists then doing it this way? You think a lot of it is because they don't have the lab right there, or they're not communicating with that the lab, or is it a cheap way out to just send them out? 
I, I do want to say one thing. Is there, there are commercial labs that are extremely talented. And one of the major trends is for the people that don't have the luxury to, to have an in-house lab, uh, the really top-notch labs, if you have them in your own town, the general dentist or the practitioner will send the patient to the lab and okay. allow the technician. And, and that helps. But it's not quite the same as having everything right chair side, one stop shopping. Is it that much harder though to, to create that natural looking smile? To make the front teeth a little longer? Because when I see these straight across teeth all the time, these it, phony it, veneers. It, it takes a, a, a special uh, attention to detail, a special eye with what you're looking at and to give uh, that extra degree of the art nature of what looks natural and what looks just like a replacement tooth. We're going to take a quick break, uh, but, but what should somebody look for then in a dentist that understands these concepts or that looks at the bite, looks at the function, and, and not just slap, slapping on uh, veneers on teeth? Well, we have had many patients come to us and say, you know, why couldn't we find you earlier? And, and what, we, and, and what your, your dentist needs to be doing is, is the workup part to begin with. There should be wax ups done, there should be impressions made of your mouth. Pictures. Uh, pictures, we take a tremendous, we have th uh, uh, three digital uh, cameras in the office, uh, and, and you sit, could even do it. Sit back and study this. Sit this back material. and study it and listen to them, and we show them uh, hands-on wax ups of how their teeth will work in their mouth uh, and, and with photos, and it's just, they understand. And then, and then they can help us there. You just go, that looks a little too long, or let me bring you a picture in. Always ask, give me your high school picture. Give me your wedding picture. And that really helps us out tremendously. To look at the way their teeth used to be. Right. At their best. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We come back. Uh, and I want you to take me through the process. Somebody that wants a new smile. And what happens on day one, et cetera. Okay. Absolutely. You're watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Ivers. We're talking about aesthetic dentistry today with doctors Seaman and Wiley. We'll be right back. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Ivers. Today's topic, cosmetic dentistry with doctors Seaman and Wiley. Okay. You brought a lot of pictures of a lot of things you're doing for teeth. What are the different categories of cosmetic or aesthetic dentistry? Uh, the different categories basically brought, break down into two major, a needs-based and a wants-based. Can okay. we enhance things? Uh, there isn't a real strong uh, need to do anything. There's no decay, no disease. We always treat to disease and trauma first. I have an example of a trauma case here. Uh, this person, a housewife, uh, out walking on her sidewalk, slipped and fell, and she broke her front teeth. Okay. She had an immediate need to fix up her smile day one. And so she comes in, and we evaluate her, listen to her needs. So what were her options? Randy, her options were to either do a cheap filling on that that would probably fell off within a couple years, or to treat it and really enhance her smile. And that's really what she wanted. She was fortunate to fall and chip her teeth because they, <laughs> she really wanted to. <laughs> they ended up looking better. Yeah, they ended up Look looking at this. a lot better. That's beautiful. That. Uh, so we were able to really uh, enhance her smile by restoring her front three teeth that she damaged uh, in the process. Now, the, the, those have a nice flow. and. They don't look like dentures. They look very natural, and she's, she's just thrilled with uh, how we build in the characteristics of natural uh, smile, edge-to-edge -edge design, and teeth uh, proportion and balance in there. And also the teeth color is obviously very important. I'd like to add something to what Dr. Seaman said. He had mentioned there was a less, ex uh, less expensive type of restoration. Um, and it, these are bonded composite restorations. And, and there's a place for those. They're very conservative. You don't have to cut the tooth down. And I, I'd like to show you a case. Okay. Here is a young girl uh, that is about, uh, I think she's 17, 18 years old, captain of the cheerleading squad at the local high school that my nice son teeth. goes to. Nice teeth. Yes, but she just got her braces off, and the first thing she noticed were there were these gaps. Now, luckily, she had worked with an orthodontist that allowed us to see this case beforehand. And we took calipers, and we measured these teeth to get a proportion. Uh, we had talked one time you know, earlier before uh, about the tooth size. The front teeth need to be a certain ratio bigger than these lateral teeth. Uh, and in her case, there's no way that on a 17, 18 year old, I'm going to go in and, and cut these teeth down. I want to do something conservative, but give her a smile. And look what we were able to do with just etching the teeth. No burrs touching the tooth at all, etching the teeth, and adding wow. yeah. tooth-colored resin, and lo and behold, 
She ended up being a homecoming queen. It was just a, uh, a really neat, neat outcome. So this is a person, spaces in their mouth. They didn't need veneers. Not, it's a non just bonding material. Right. And you know, Randy, those white fellings will be there in 10 to 15 years from now because they're in a non-functional area. They'll, they'll be beautiful. It's a gorgeous case. And Frank, you did a case that um, um, lady had spaces but had other problems. Yeah. Randy, take a look at the side-by-side -side before and after. And the differences, even though are very subtle, uh, really, really make a difference on the way this girl is perceived. And her, she commented that her girlfriends and other girls on the cheerleading squad just could not believe. They thought that uh, she had had all this expensive veneer work done and, 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 and all that. And really, it was so conservative. And it took, us, took me less than an hour to do this. No shots, painless. Dad came in. His daughter was just beaming. And uh, it was, it it's was exciting, just, it's exciting. It's exciting. It really is. So gaps are an easy one to take care of. A lot of people out there with gaps in their teeth. Really depends on the reason for the gap, Randy. And uh, I have a, a person that came over from Kansas for me to fix her gap between her front two teeth. We got looking at, uh, she's really a young person but has an old smile. Okay. And uh, her teeth, as you can see, are starting to flare out outside of the, the lips, the line there. And uh, they're starting to shift and move. And so. What cause? So they just start moving forward? It, the, the teeth are not stable in the presence of the bite. And so we have to stabilize the bite and stabilize the teeth position, posture. Very, very. Uh, easy uh, concept to understand once we can fix the bite we can overall fix the gap and with her we had to wow. fix the bite yeah it really a dramatic case uh, she was so so pleased that, that she sent her twin sister over from Kansas. Now from an old smile if we could show the before for a second look at that smile. That's amazing. And now it looks like uh, you go to the after now. It, it took 10-15 years off her life. And More educated in that smile. In, it's funny, the perception. Yeah, yeah. That I'm is absolutely right. And that's why we were saying it changes their lifestyle because they just, it, it's amazing. The confidence factor and how they smile. I even had one patient say, my cheeks hurt. I'm smiling so much. Is that right? So with veneers, you don't have to have all veneers. You could accomplish it with just a couple in certain cases. I have a patient here. Uh, and one of the things that we haven't discussed is, is the ability, uh, one of the biggest crazes right now is, is whitening the teeth. Uh, I had an extremely attractive lady came in uh, and she had started with her general practitioner on whitening, whitening her teeth. And um, it got to the point where they got the tooth color right, but he was very concerned that maybe his ceramist would not be able to reproduce her smile because she has a very broad smile. And if we take a look at this, this slide right here, okay. you can see the whitening has been done and this actually, these veneers, old veneers, actually match the color of her teeth. And you can see how dramatically So everything white. turned white except for those two old veneers. Yes, and now okay. it was our job, and lots of times we'll do it with starting with a temporary wow. restoration, and those are just the, the plastic temporary restorations, and we work with that and see how the patient likes that. And then we're gonna and talk about the broad smile. We had to get the tissue right, the contours right, and the color right to make her happy. We are just about out of time. Randy, I have a great one here I want to share with okay. you first. We have time for a few more. Okay. Sure. Uh, you know, other reasons why people come in is they have a hereditary problem. I have a gentleman that uh, he had a really soft teeth and he had enamel just wasn't bonding to the dentin of the underlying teeth and the enamel was basically falling off, causing the teeth to become discolored and decay. And as you can see uh, with this gentleman, he also had some crooked teeth too. Very pointy teeth. Oh yeah. And he, he really, in the worst way, wanted an improvement with his smile and also strong teeth to keep them the rest of his life. Okay, so what do, you, do. what do you do for something like this? You we, say he has weak teeth? We ended up putting ceramic crowns on all, all of the teeth that were affected by weak teeth with the weak enamel bonding. Wow. And it wasn't all of his teeth. That's a million dollar most. smile. Yeah, oh, man, he was, he was so Go pleased. to the before for just a moment. Okay, from that... We're able to Huge accomplish difference. with just a, a couple visits, a couple, about a month or two in dentistry. And to change his smile that dramatic changes his life. Good. Now, what else do you have? Well, the one other thing I wanted to say here real quick is notice how we filled out the, the sides of a smile, where it was very narrow before. It's all planned out. It's all planned out. Now, here is a lady who is an artist that lives up in the mountains, just one of the most tremendous people I've ever met. But look at this smile. This smile does not 
tell you that this lady is incredibly intelligent, very talented. It, it looks like an old smile. She has worn the teeth uh, from toothbrush abrasion, uh, also uh, citric acid. She likes to eat a lot of fruit. She's a very healthy person. But look at what this does. It, it literally erodes the enamel away, uh, and then the dentin underneath starts ditching out. It's like a pothole in a road, and not only up here, but we have it on the lower teeth too. So Is this common? You see things like in this? In our practice, we, we have a ton of people that have this problem. Yes, this is one of our major referrals, wear and erosion on teeth. People are keeping their teeth longer. Okay. And that means they are, they're affected by what we do, okay? So what we were able to do is, we use those metal ceramic crowns. This has a gold coping with the porcelain fused on it for the back teeth because it's stronger. We use the all ceramic on the front teeth because it allows the light to come in and really be gorgeous. gorgeous. Okay. Same on the lower. And there's her smile. Wow. Yes. We're out of time. What, what do you want people to know about what you're doing at your office? Randy, we consider ourselves high touch, high tech. What I mean by that is that we listen to people's needs when they come in, what they want. We do a thorough evaluation, comprehensive uh, check of their mouth, and we educate them with really what's possible in dentistry today. People don't know what their options are, and that's what we provide them. I want to thank both of you for coming to the show. Dr. Seaman, Dr. Wiley, appreciate it. Thanks. Thank Andy. you very much. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like information about future airings of this program or other show topics, visit our website at wellnesshour.com. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.